Mr. Speaker, I thank you very much. It's a real honor to speak on this important piece of legislation, which is, is terribly flawed, and uh, hopefully the government will, will listen. I, um, just before I speak uh, specifically to C24, I, just the, the previous Liberal Speaker with great gusto, gusto uh, shared uh, to this House, to you, that uh, he was shocked that they were, uh, that about a question of young people having access to, to cannabis. And uh, with great gusto, gusto he, he said, was the member not aware that people under the age of 25 are using cannabis? Yes, that is happening. And that's why, as a country, we need to better control um, cannabis and, and access to the youth. So the new scientific, liberal scientific approach is to make sure that our young people, 12, 13, 14, do not have access to cannabis. We're going to make sure that they can have access to cannabis. What they are proposing with the marijuana legislation is to 12 to 18, five grams, youth will be able to legally possess five grams. When you hit the age of 18, it'll, it goes to 30 grams. Five grams of, of marijuana is 15 joints. 30 grams is 90 joints. So their new scientific approach is the way they're going to keep marijuana out of the hands of youth is allowing youth to have in their possession up to 15 grams each. Now, I, 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 uh, that is a science course that I never have taken. And uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's the new liberal science course. But uh, we're here to talk about the government's approach to appointments of ministers. And I think everyone in this House fully supports the, the proposal and the, and the goal of having gender equity in Cabinet. And that starts with encouraging women and girls to get involved with politics much more than what has happened in the past. And I'm really excited, even seeing uh, pages uh, with us here today. Many of them are female. We have. Uh, my, my job as a member of parliament, I could not do it without my partner, my wife of 45 years, Diane. And when I'm not in my riding of beautiful Langley, Langley Aldergrove, my wife represents me and uh, many say she's a better speaker than I am. And I wouldn't argue with them. She's very bright, very capable, and very much my equal, maybe even my superior. But I love her and I fully respect and, and agree with the, the goal of gender equity. And it needs to start with pay equity. And I think everyone in this House, on this side anyway, supports pay equity. And if the government says they do, but they have, if they only had a majority government, then they could get it through and get pay equity. But in fact, they do have a majority government, a strong majority, and they, do, they could get that through if it was a priority. So, Mr. Speaker, there is this uh, parable that a tree is known by its fruit. If the tree has apples on it, it's an apple tree. If it has oranges, it's, it's an orange tree. So if the government says, we believe in gender equity, what kind of fruit are, is on their tree, their tree of truth? And unfortunately, Canadians are seeing what the government says and what the government does is two very, very different things. And so we're talking about changing the appointments to ministers, changing junior ministers, ministers of state, to now being paid the same amount as a full minister, but not having the title, nor the responsibility, nor the support. And so tokenism is not what uh, this side believes in, and Canadians don't believe in tokenism. It has to be truly gender equity. And so uh, some of the most intelligent women I've ever worked with um, when I was uh, in this house, Ron Ambrose, the former leader of our party, and before that she was uh, a number of ministers, very capable. I was her parliamentary secretary and I was honored to be in that, given that responsibility. Very intelligent woman uh, and it was, uh, I learned from her 
and uh, it was an exciting time to be the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Environment. Before being elected, I was with the Insurance Corporation of, of British Columbia. Aileen Shibata was, uh, was our manager, our regional manager, manager for loss prevention and road safety. Very intelligent woman. And there are very intelligent women that should be given responsibilities in this House based on their skill level. And, and it sh that's how it should be, I believe. Pay equity based on the work that you do. And if you have those skills, then we need to honor those skills and give that person responsibility, regardless of their gender. And so I think that goal of encouraging women to get involved is a goal that's very important and, and needs to be encouraged. And I need, I, uh, Mr. Speaker, we need to encourage the government to truly, truly uh, give women opportunities. I'm thinking of what is said and what is done. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there's a by-election going on in Canada. There are four ridings. Uh, one of them is in South Surrey, White Rock. And, uh, Mr. Speaker, the Liberals chose uh, a man to run for them. A uh, very nice man, a retired man, but uh, there was a woman, a very capable, intelligent woman, that wanted to run for the Liberals, uh, and they said, no, we want a man. And, um, which was very unfortunate, because if the government really believes in gender equity, they would have given that woman the opportunity to run. So the woman that's running in that actually is Carrie Lynn Finley, who is a former cabinet minister, and I hope she returns back here after the December 11th, because very capable, and again, an example of our party supporting women to get involved with politics. Mr. Speaker, um, having been in this House for 13 and a half years, elected in 2004, I've experienced the importance of regional development ministers. And uh, the regional development minister for British Columbia, very successful. That, re that regional minister's office is where the provinces went to to, uh, to meet. The province repre provincial representatives went to the regional minister, and in a coordinated, prioritized way, they were able to put the money into infrastructure where it was needed, and it would have long-term benefits. Now, without an organized approach, without uh, removing the regional ministers, you lose that organized approach and that voice and that consultation between the federal government and the provincial governments. And so I think it's a big mistake. The other uh, problem that I have with C24 is the so-called minister, the ministers, the mi mystery ministers. Mr. Speaker, uh, the government is saying, trust us, pass this, just trust us, and we're going to appoint some mystery ministers. Who are those mystery ministers? Well, we've heard from the last speaker, possibly the status of women. Uh, what about a minister for seniors? The largest demographic in Canada is Canadian seniors. Canadian seniors, for the last two years, have been ignored by this parliament because the government says they care about seniors, but they don't. The most recent example, Mr. Speaker, was the recent announcement with great uh, confetti in the air and great splendor, they announced the Canadian housing, National Housing Strategy. There was mention of seniors eight to 18 times in the report, and not once was there any solution or announcement how they were going to take care of Canadian seniors. How could that happen where they acknowledge the needs of seniors, but nothing announced to address the needs of seniors? And that is because there is no Minister for Seniors. So, Mr. Speaker, with, with great sincerity, I would ask through you that the government can appoint, and because C24 is going to be rammed through as they ram through everything, that they need to seriously consider the plight of Canadian seniors. Right now, 70% uh, of people, Canadians, in the last days, last weeks, last years of their life that need palliative care have no access to it. 70%. That, again, is because there is no Minister for Seniors. There used to be, Mr. Speaker, in the previous Parliament, that previous government had seniors as a priority. And I, I again ask, Mr. Speaker, that the government put their words into action and appoint a Minister for Seniors. Thank you. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Winnipeg North. 
Yeah, uh, Mr. Speaker, yes, the member's right. Uh, Stephen Harper did have a minister uh, responsible for seniors, but keep in mind he had 40 ministers in total. 40 ministers, which was a record high in terms of when you take a look at cabinets and ministries, uh, no government in the history of Canada had more ministers uh, than, uh, than that particular uh, prime minister. Having said that, within this legislation, it should be clearly established that uh, there is only going to be a one-tier uh, minister so that when they sit around the cabinet table, that they are all equal, whether you're the minister of democratic reform, of uh, finance, defense, health, they're all equal when they sit around that table, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. I think that's really important for us to note. Within this legislation, the member is asking about the importance of Minister of, of Seniors. We recognize the value of Minister of Seniors. Talk to the Minister of, of Finance about the increase to the GIS. What about when they, the, uh, and that's something our government has done, literally lifting thousands of seniors out of, out of poverty. We have decreased the age of retirement from 67 to 65. The member will recall when they had a ministry of seniors, they actually increased the age of retirement from 65 to 67. We reversed that. So it's the priorities of government that are really important to recognize here. And the good news is, is that within this legislation, it does enable not only the current but future prime ministers to be able to extend and have a couple more uh, cabinet ministers. And that is, is a good thing too, I suspect, given uh, the member's uh, comments. He can maybe just provide some thought, his thoughts on my comments. Well, member for Langley Eldergrove. So, Mr. Speaker, the, the member, uh, uh, I don't uh, think it was deliberate, but he's misled uh, the, this, uh, this parliament or he's ill-informed. In fact, it was, Mr. Speaker, the previous government realized that Canadians are living longer, working longer, and so they projected that to make sure through uh, um, that the age of eligibility for uh, old age security was, gonna, was suggested to raise up from 65 to 67, and that was going to take, take place in 2021. In fact, uh, it had not yet taken place, and the government, again with great grandeur, said that they were going back to 65. That's their opportunity, but nothing changed. It was 65 in 2015. It stayed at, at 65. Now, but what, what we, and at the HUMA committee, we found out, Mr. Speaker, that the moves that the government has made with the, the poison pill in their agenda it will actually save the government close to $4 billion a year by the way they're treating Canadian seniors, by the changes they made, because they scale back, they give a little bit more here, but they take a lot back here. They're actually hurting Canadian seniors, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaires? The Honourable Member for Vancouver Kingsway. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, we in the New Democratic Party have been championing equality for um, women for decades. And um, again, I'm happy to see that there is a gender parity cabinet, but really this government has become one that is a government of spin, image, and good intentions, mm -hmm. rather than uh, solid actions. You always have to look beneath the surface to see if their rhetoric really matches a reality. And I, I just was looking at the structure of this government, and even though they, this government's making a big deal of its commitment to women, and the Prime Minister says he's a feminist, and um, they, they have gender parity in Cabinet, I, I'm quite shocked to see that the Minister, res the, the minister responsibility, uh, responsible for the status of Women Canada uh, prevails over the status of Women's Canada, which is an agency currently under the Department of Canadian Heritage. Yep. So this government, although it says that women make up more than half the population, has not actually saw fit to create a standalone ministry mm -hmm. responsible for women. And I'm wondering if my honourable colleague can comment on that as to whether or not he thinks that the, this government's lack of action on real equality for women matches their rhetoric and what they would like Canadians to believe. The Honourable Member for Langley Alder Grove in 45 seconds or less, please. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I would agree with the member that there is a lot of rhetoric, uh, and uh, it's unfortunate that uh, the truth isn't coming out. You Canadians know where the Conservative Party stands. Canadians know where the NDP stand. Uh, Canadians do not know what the Liberal government stands because they will tell Canadians what they want to hear, but what they have planned is something very different. And I would agree that the rhetoric does not match. 
what they actually do.